And it's a little bit sad to say this will be the last time I get to introduce our Dubbo Regional Council Mayor, Matthew Dickerson, to the show. Good morning. Well, who knows, Matt? I might come down and be mayor of where you're going to and you can introduce me again. <laughs> I don't think... You, you love Dubbo too much. You could never leave this, uh, this wonderful place. You are right. You've read me like a book. But yep. anyway, look, best of luck where you go. It's sad to see you go. You're here way too short and uh, I enjoyed my time with you. It was always... Good, enjoyable interviews, and uh, you had a bit of fun, but also asked the serious questions, which is always good. I'm always happy with that, so uh, best of luck as you go forward. Uh, buttering me up, Mr Mayor, will get you nowhere, but I appreciate, appreciate Have one it. last go at it. <laughs> uh, now, I just mentioned earlier, our listeners are going to be interested, that there's been two Code of Conduct complaints uh, against Dubbo Regional Council. Please explain, Mr Mayor, what's happening? Well, there's not much to explain, unfortunately. The process is that every year, council must report to the community on the number of code of conduct complaints that were lodged against council laws or council staff. And we as a council said, we don't think that's good enough. We want to have them reported to us quarterly, reported to the council and reported to the community quarterly. So what you're reading there is in the last quarter, there were two code of conduct complaints lodged against council or the council staff, and that's all we know. And the process is that the process is confidential. So if you decide to lodge a code of conduct against anyone, mm. your name is kept out of it. The person that you're lodging the complaint against, their name is kept out of it until and if it gets to a process where it's deemed necessary to actually go through and expose that process. So it, what it does is it stops frivolous complaints being made. It doesn't stop them being made. It stops them actually damaging someone's reputation. So if you decide you don't like someone, you could lodge 20 complaints a week on right. that particular person. And if their name was revealed every time, someone would say, oh, gee, Joe Well, Ross, then how, oh. how have, have these journalists then seen these? I mean, is, is that public knowledge seeing how many at complaints our, are put forward? At our standing committee meeting last night, that's where it was reported to councillors in the community that here is the list of complaints, or sorry, the number of complaints. So, right, but you don't know who they're towards, you don't know what they're about, all you know is the number. Exactly right, and I don't know, as mayor I don't know, councillors don't know, we don't know any of the details. The complaints will be lodged with the CEO, the CEO makes a determination in the first instance to say whether or not there's enough merit, if you like, I you want to call that, in those to go forward, and then there's a... So if I said, uh, I don't like the shirt that uh, our mayor's wearing, that'll get flicked off. But if it's something serious, the CEO is going to go, right, this needs to go further. Correct. And if you did and you say, I don't it. like the shirt that I'm wearing, and you lodged a code of conduct on that, in those numbers, you'd see an extra one, because there was another code of conduct complaint lodged. So it's still, it's still a complaint, you just don't ever find out what it was about. That's right. And part of that process, then, when I see two in there... I think, well, there's two complaints that have been lodged. The CEO has determined they're not serious enough, so they probably weren't that serious in terms of the complaint. There might have been people who weren't happy with the decision, but uh -huh. being unhappy with the decision is not a reason to have a code of conduct problem if the decision was made in the correct way. Right. If, if you go, oh, look, I really wanted them to do... I wanted them to paint the roads pink and they painted them blue, well, I'm not happy with that. Well, that's not really a reason. If it was they wanted to paint the roads pink but their mate was a, a person who supplied blue paint and they went that way, that probably be more serious than a code of conduct sure. complaint, but you get right. the idea that you can have frivolous complaints. It's when they go through the process, and if they're serious enough, they'll actually come back to council, and an outcome from that will be told to the community. Mm. So if, for example... If it was against uh, uh, Councillor X, does Councillor X need to leave the room when it's discussed? When, if it comes all the if, way if back... If it gets to that stage. Absolutely yeah. right, yes. Yeah. So because you would be discussing some sort of punishment, some sort of um, process. It might be, for example, that he needs to write a formal apology to the community. There are various things that might happen. The Office of Local Government might be involved. They may say that this is a bad enough complaint that this council needs to have a holiday for three months, for example, right. from council. So there are various things, various steps that could happen. But at this stage, the complaints obviously weren't bad enough to go any further than the CEO's desk, and then they've gone back from there. Okay. Um, can you, can you get me one of those three-month holidays as well? That sounds all right. Uh, They're unpaid three-month holidays, oh, so right? it doesn't help that much. Now, uh, well, sp speaking of dollars, I mean, these complaints are, aren't, aren't a cheap exercise to deal with. Uh, in the qu quarter uh, 2021 and 2022 financial year, Council spent fifty two over 52000 quarter one, over 80000 quarter two, over 7000 in the third quarter and over 12,000 in the fourth quarter. 
why such a significant cost, A, but B, why do they fluctuate so much? And if I go back to the previous council, there were a, a lot of complaints lodged in the previous council term, and those costs that you're talking about there were in the main, I think probably all of those were dealing with the complaints from the previous council because it takes time to go through that process. Right. So if, if it occurs, and I'll give a very quick wrap here, in that a complaint comes through, if the CO deems it necessary, it goes to a reviewer, that costs money. Mm. Now, as soon as that reviewer is engaged, that's where, I mean, the CEO is part of his job, he doesn't get paid extra to deal with them, so there's no additional cost. Mm. But as soon as it goes to a reviewer to be reviewed, and then it might be a longer review, so there might be a small amount of money just for the reviewer to look at it. If the reviewer says, oh, look, I can see why you've given it to me, Mr. CEO, there's a bit of merit here, but no, I don't think it needs to go any further, that might be one cost. Then it, if it was, well, yes, this is pretty serious, we need to go through and do some interviews with some people and get some further information, then that's another cost. So they can add up fairly quickly because you're obviously engaging people who are expensive to do that. And then obviously coming back to council, there's no cost as such to come back to council. It's more those external costs. So those ones there, we, we haven't had to deal with any complaints that have come back to council around the current group of councillors. All of those ones there you're talking about there, those costs you associated, those previous ones, 2021, 2022. And that's all rate payer money too. Those. It's all rate payer money. And, and some people have said to me in the past, Oh, I'm not happy with this, I should just lodge a code of conduct. I said, well, that's your right to do that. Everyone has that right. But I said, I'd prefer that you try to talk to the person because mm. when you lodge a code of conduct, it's a very confrontational process and it can be expensive for the community. It's going to cost you money. Well, it's going to cost the community money. That's, that's right. right. And I'd rather be putting that money into roads. So as much as I might encourage people not to put code of conducts in, I mean, again, I'm not trying to bully them into it, but if someone says they want to lodge a code of conduct, I would always say, talk to the person if something happened where someone you feel was rude to you or it didn't go the way you wanted, have the conversation with the person. That That's always it's the best It's good life way. advice, isn't it? Well, I think so, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be giving you know, counselling advice here. But, that's right. but I think that's a better way to go about things or involve some other people. In other words, say, oh, look, can I meet with you, Councillor X, and can you bring another couple of councillors with you because I, I want to have that conversation with you and I want some people around you to make sure that and you're And residents can do that. You can they can reach the out to, and, to councillors and... Yeah, send them an email, ring them, do whatever you, you need to do, have that All the mobile phones are on the council's website, I know, because I use it a lot. There, there you go. So, uh, all right, right, let's. Uh, we haven't got a heap of time. There's some other things I want to chat about. Um, a bit, bit of history, actually. Eight years ago yesterday, Mr Mayor, you, uh, you, you had a bit of a, um, <laughs> uh, an incident. You broke your back. Three spots, three vertebrae, actually, I broke, um, as you say, eight years ago. It was in a mountain bike series that I created as a council. We had Evo Cities at the time, seven councils all working together. So I created an Evo Cities mountain bike series. And I thought that'd be nice for me to race in it. Well, it wasn't so nice because I ended up in Liverpool Hospital with three broken vertebrae. So, yeah, a bit scary. But a couple of days later, you still did the Anzac Day uh, It was service. actually probably the most pain I've ever been in. Sitting there with a, a neck brace on, sitting very stiff in the cold of the morning, uh, still managed to make it along to Anzac Day. The other quick anniversary while you're on anniversaries is 20 years tomorrow. That's the one I was going oh, to mention. Oh, you better go there. Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry, you go there then. No, I was just going to say that the council chambers uh, had a fire in, in the chambers 20 years ago today. 20 years ago, and they had to move everyone out. I mean, obviously, there was an emergency in the morning. The alarms went off and fire brigade, etc. And that was before I was on council. But what had to happen then was everyone had to move out of the council building because there was smoke damage, there was water damage. Mm. Everyone had to move out. And at the time where the Western Plains Cultural Centre is now, at the time that was an old high school, Dubbo High School, which council had bought, looking to move it or change it into something like it's been changed into now. And effectively, the councillors, council, everyone had to move into the old high school. And when I first got on council, which was about uh, a year after, about eight months after the fire, then my first meetings were in a classroom at Dubbo wow. High School. So it was quite an interesting scenario. It, uh, it certainly is. And you know what? In 20 years from now, they're going to say today was the last day that Dubbo Mayor and Matt Collins chatted together. I can see that being 100 years down the track. Oh, Matt will be talking about it'll, that. It'll go down in the history books. If only we spoke about uh, stuff more interesting. <laughs> Matthew Dickerson, it has been a joy each and every week to chat to you. Thanks for your time. Oh, thanks, Matt. It's 2 to 8 here on 2 to you.